Good day and welcome to Grassroots Vegan. I'm David Kelly and today I would like to talk about one being one month low fat raw vegan and compare that to raw until four. And also I would like to talk about Harley of Durian Riders and Freely, Freely the Banana Girl who are on YouTube, famous YouTubers. And um, you know where they are going with raw until four, which they've completely embraced. And what my opinion is about that, where do I think they're going with this and where they may end up? So I'll talk about that later, but first I would just like to share with you what it's been like for me to be more or less 100% raw in the last month. And that is I've been eating predominantly fruits with a lot of leafy green vegetables and some overt fats like nuts and seeds, and I think I may have had an avocado here and there, but I'm not too keen on avocados. So, um, so yeah, improvements. Well, there have been some, but it's been subtle, I'd have to say. Whatever benefits I've experienced, they've been slight. And the reason being is I've been a vegan for seven years, and I've been a low-fat vegan for most of that time. And, um, you know, I've gone back and forth from being 100% raw to, you know, practicing raw to four, which I've done most of the time. And most of the excess weight that I had before I became vegan, I've lost and I've kept it off. And in terms of detoxification, I had a lot of that in the beginning. So I didn't really experience this time doing 100% raw. Um, any detoxification or, or any other radical changes because I've gone through that already. But there have definitely been some subtle improvements. And first of all, I, I would have to say that my energy levels are a, a little bit, have increased a little bit. And um, I also feel like I have a heightened sense of well-being and you know what do I mean by that um, I feel a little bit more optimistic a little bit more joyous a little more a little bit more lighter uh, I mean that's the best I can explain it but there is a and again it's slight you know it wasn't like I didn't feel like this before eating um, a low-fat vegan diet raw to four but it just seems to be a little bit heightened now. And um, what else? Um, I'm, I've, been, I've been more productive. Now that, that could also play into the fact that I'm constantly working on improving myself. And a part of that is being more productive. So I'm in that mindset. But no, I think it definitely, eating 100% raw has made, again, a slight difference in that regards. Um, weight loss, again, there has been some, because I mentioned in my other video that I was heavier than what I'd like to be for the kind of running that I would like to do. I'd like to increase my, improve my performance in running, get faster, um, and I felt like I was head, too heavy, I was carrying too much weight to run the speeds that I'd like to run. So I am gradually losing weight in that regard. Again, it's slight. I don't know the exact poundage because I don't weigh myself and I'm not going to weigh myself. Um, you know, I'm not against, you know, if you, so for some people it's important to keep track of their weight. For me, it's not. It's more about, you know, how I look, how I feel, um, the difference when I put my clothes on. You know, when you put your pants on, there's room there. Something's changed, right? Or, when you go in the shower and your thighs don't meet in the sh don't touch each other anymore, those are the little subtleties that tell you, yeah, you really are losing weight. But I'm, what I'm more interested in is what is my fat to muscle ratio. Now I haven't, I don't have the means to measure that, um, but if I do ever get the chance to, that's to me that would be more relevant. Is is what is my fat to muscle ratio? Um, but definitely, I have noticed 
slight different, like slight changes in my weight that I am getting lighter. Um, my poops are more fibrous too. This is another thing I've noticed, and less odorous. When you eat raw till four, now your poops are not, they don't, they're not rancid like, you know, um, someone who eats a standard American diet, drinks alcohol, drinks coffee, maybe smokes cigarettes as well. Let me tell you, when I used to do all that stuff, my poops just reeked. They were toxic. Rod to four, no, you, you're not going to have that kind of rancid smell, but there is more of an odor than when you are 100% low fat raw vegan. Um, and the poops are, yeah, like if you eat a lot of mangoes one day, you're going to get a very fibrous texture to your poop. And the smell, if there is any, will have a little bit of a sort of odor of the mangoes that you eat, but it won't be rancid. It won't be something that's, you know, abhorrent. Um, so I, I would say there's an improvement in digestion in that regard. Again, these are all just slight improvements. They're nothing major. So what do I eat then when I eat 100% raw? Um, well, my main staples are where I get most of my calories from are bananas, definitely, because bananas are the most affordable, caloric-rich fruits out there. And especially where I live, I know where I can get bananas at, like sometimes as low as 39 cents a pound. Dates is another one. Calorie-rich, very sweet. Um, they will meet your cal caloric needs. And uh, mangoes. I find mangoes a great source to get the calories that you need, and they taste great as well. Mangoes are amongst my favorite fruits. And then secondly, my secondary source of calories would come from apples and oranges, and sometimes pears. And then I like my tropical treats. These are fruits that I like to eat. I would like to eat them more than I do, but they're so expensive that I restrict how much I eat of those fruits. And that would be uh, sapote, cherimoya, and passion fruit. And there's many others, but those are the main ones right there. Um, what were the challenges in the last month being 100% raw? Uh, well, when you're busy and you're, you know, you're running around, you're driving around in your car, picking people up, meeting appointments, all that stuff, then, and you get hungry, there is the tent, and you smell food from a restaurant or something, yes, you do, at that point, you might be craving for some cooked food or any kind of food just to get a fix because you're, you know, you're starting to get low on fuel. That, that, those were challenges at times. Um, or if you're running low on stock or you run out of stock and you might be tempted to just take a shortcut and cook up some food for yourself. So you got to make sure that you're well stocked up on your fruits. Um, evening cravings is one of the things, you know, I've had those, but I, they haven't been prevalent. Like, I can't say every night I had cravings for cooked food or for something, you know, that I wouldn't normally eat. But there were a few times where those cravings did occur. And the way I remedied that was I uh, ate kale chips. There was two times where I craved something salty and I decided to get some dehydrated kale chips. And it, it hit the spot, it did the trick for me. Now they're a little high in fat, but they're so low in calories that, you know, there was no, it, it didn't throw off the, you know, the low fat diet that I'm trying to maintain. Um, and then celery too, uh, sodium rich celery is, uh, can also kind of evade those cravings. Again, I didn't have a lot. I thought I'd have more than what I did. And um, so that's great. Um, so, you know, my conclusion is, is that for a 54 year old male like myself, 
the low-fat, raw vegan diet, a diet of predominantly fruits, leafy green vegetables, and um, with some overt fats, but to a minimal, is the best approach for me. It works. It's the most effective. Um, I feel the best this way, and I see the best results. Not to knock the raw to four, I just, you know, I think that's probably really helpful, especially if you're younger and you want to maintain a low-fat vegan diet. That's a great approach to take, especially if you're socially active and you're going to be in restaurant environments, then that's a great diet to follow. And I would highly recommend it because it's, I mean, when you're younger, your social life is extremely important. And um, being 100% raw, low-fat vegan, is, can be socially challenging, to say the least. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think when you reach a certain age, too, when you start to hit middle age, that eating a lot of cooked foods tends to make you heavier. I just... I, even if it's low fat, I can't explain it physiologically why that is, but I just tended to be more bloated by eating cooked food. I don't know if it was if it was just water retention, or it actually is fat. I'm not sure, um, but it's just uh, you know it's what I've experienced. So let's talk about Harley and Freely the famous YouTubers um, who are embracing Raw to Four and they are just having the time of their life going out to all these different Asian restaurants and vegan restaurants and eating all these wonderful dishes um, and, and seem to be thriving on this lifestyle, Raw to Four. My opinion is that we got to realize both of them were prior to being raw to four, they were 100% low fat raw vegan and they were strong proponents of that particular diet, low fat raw vegan, 80 10 10. They were fanatical about it and they used to criticize people for eating cooked food. I, I mean, I've followed them both for years now. Um, and Freely, she lost, I mean, she was heavier before, and she lost all that excess weight practicing a low-fat raw vegan diet. It wasn't until after all their health benefits were in place and that they were thriving that they decided to go raw to four. And so they're still thriving, but the, the benefits came from a low-fat raw vegan diet not from the raw to four diet. So, but we don't know if had they done the raw to four in the beginning and just continued doing that, that they would have had the same results. Again, I think age plays into it. They're in the mid, mid 30s and you can get a lot of, you can get away with a lot more in your mid 30s. And so, what I, my, I'm almost willing to bet on this, that when they do hit their 40s or their mid 40s, or their 50s, that they will start to have challenges that they don't have now um, with the way they eat, raw until four. And, uh, and I think, I believe, that eventually they will go back to practicing 100% low-fat raw vegan because they're going to realize that ultimately this is the only thing that will really work effectively, consistently, for them throughout their whole life. Again, I could be wrong, but that's, I'm, I'm predicting that, okay? That they will eventually, by the time they hit middle age, they will return to 100% low fat raw vegan. Um, but was, time will tell, right? So that's it. I mean, again, I've done a month 100% low-fat raw vegan. I didn't really have, you know, I wasn't doing a 30-day raw food thing or anything like that. 
no timeline set on this, and uh, but I like the results, and um, I like I'm not going to stop it now. So I'm just going to continue on being raw, and I will leave the option there to eat cooked food. I don't believe in putting food restrictions on myself because if I were to compromise on those restrictions, then I'm going to feel guilty and um, I feel like a failure, and those are things I don't need, you know, so I like to leave my options open. But that being said, I plan on continuing eating low-fat raw vegan because it works. It works for me. I love it. It's great. I'm energized. And my running is getting better. I don't know, you know, maybe my running would have got better anyways, but it's getting better, I'm getting faster, and I'm very slowly trimming down. So, I keep, keep the good stuff going, that's all I can say. Anyways, have a great day, and fruit up. Eat lots of fruit. Take care.